The Singer 201 was a full-size, straight-stitch sewing machine, made from the early 1930s to the early 1960s. So how did it get the reputation for being the best sewing machine in the world? Widely regarded as one of the best straight-stitch domestic sewing machines ever made, it's often referred to as the Rolls-Royce of sewing machines. Indeed, a modified version of the 201 was used in Rolls-Royce's trim shop to sew light leather for the dash and door trims. Singer was so proud of the 201 that in 1957 they presented one to Princess Elizabeth as a wedding present. So, what makes this such a good machine? Apart from Singer's quality engineering, the 201 benefited from a full rotary hook system and a high carbon, close mesh gear drive. This made the machine very smooth and capable of 1100 stitches per minute. Most people think that these gears need to be greased, however Singer, in their manual, only ever suggests using oil. This is probably due to the gears meshing so closely that grease would be too thick. The 201 also boasted a large harp space, which made them popular with professional tailors and seamstresses. You could also raise the presser foot up further by lifting the lever up to accommodate bulky fabrics. There is also the facility to drop the feed dogs for darning and embroidery. It uses the popular Class 66 drop-in bobbin and standard 15 by one needles. The machine has a numbered tension dial and a graduated stitch length indicator with reverse feed. Similar to some Class 15 machines, the stitch length can be locked off using this screw. This limits the stitch length in reverse to the same as the stitch length going forward. The machine was available either as a treadle, or with a direct drive motor known as a potted motor. These were more popular in the States than in the UK. It could come with an external motor, or as a portable hand cranked machine. Most electric machines in the UK had the light to the back, while in the US the 201 mainly had the light to the front, similar to the featherweight. This machine used a slightly different casting. The Singer 201 weighed approximately 30 pounds, making it pretty heavy for a portable machine. This was addressed in the late 1950s, when like the Singer 99, the 201 was given a makeover. The style was similar to that of the 99's replacement, the Singer 185, but in the case of the new 201, it was now produced in cast aluminium, which offered a weight saving of around £6, or 20%. After World War II, there was a surplus of aluminium available from aircraft production, and it's rumoured that some of these aluminium body 201s contain parts of recycled Spitfires. The new aluminium version was offered in the traditional black finish, or a more modern tan, or tan and brown combination. In this guise, the machine was offered as a treadle, or hand crank, or with an external motor. However, the direct drive potted motor was discontinued. The 201 was always the most expensive machine in the Singer range, and in today's money would cost well in excess of £1,000. By the early 1960s, the 201 was proving expensive to produce as well as expensive to buy, and sales were lost to cheaper Japanese imports, which, while of an inferior quality, were often a third of the price of a singer, and boasted features such as zigzag capabilities. The naming convention for the Singer 201 is shown in this table. It is testament to the quality of Singer's engineering that there are so many 201s around today, and that they are still such a sought after model. The 201 came with a second spool pin, which enabled winding of a bobbin without unthreading the machine. Undo the stop motion knob to stop the needle bar moving while winding the bobbin. Place a spool of thread on the spool pin. Feed the thread through the lower tension disc. and through one of the holes on the bobbin. Place the bobbin on the bobbin winder pin. 
Make sure that the bobbin is engaged on the pin on the winder. Engage the winder against the hand wheel and start to wind. The winder will automatically disengage when done, or you can stop when you feel you have enough thread on the bobbin. Re-engage the stop motion knob and drop the bobbin into the case. The bobbin goes in with the thread coming off in a clockwise fashion. Feed the thread through the notch in the bobbin case and down and across towards the needle. Place a spool of thread on the top spool pin and bring the thread over to the front guide. And down and around the tensioner ensuring that the thread goes between the tension discs. Pull the thread up and the tension spring back until the thread sits in this notch. Bring the thread up and through the take-up lever. Make sure that the thread goes through these thread guides. As well as the guide above the needle. The needle is inserted into the machine with the flat side to the left, so the needle is threaded from right to left. While holding the top thread, turn the hand wheel towards you and draw up the bottom thread, and we're ready to sew. To drop the feed dogs, lift the machine up and loosen this screw. Move this lever down and retighten the screw. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a like. If you haven't already, please subscribe by hitting the red subscribe button. When it turns grey, you're subscribed and you'll be notified of all my future uploads. Thanks for watching.